Okay, so in the last video, we set up the ceiling light as well as the volume light for the ceiling also. Uh, in this video, we're going to go ahead and continue working on lighting. And we're going to set up a couple of new lights for this uh, window over here, this arc-shaped uh, window. So first things first, I'm going to go back to this ceiling light, which I didn't rename before. So the, the name point's just not going to be good enough. Let's call this ceiling light just to keep things nice and organized. Okay. I need another portal light for this arc window down here. So instead of creating a new one and creating the shader connections and stuff all over again, I'm just going to take the portal light that I've already created once and simply duplicate that one. And that'll make things a lot easier for me. And it'll it's also a good time saver. So let's just rotate the light so it's facing uh, toward the inside there of our building. I'm just going to place the light roughly right in the middle of the window there so I'll space it pretty evenly okay and let's see let's also rename it so open up the PPG I'm gonna call this arc window light and let's go ahead and create a preview there and see what we have So this is what we get. We get this very nice sort of a sunset or sunrise orangey uh, warm color coming in there through the window. Let's make a few changes to this light, however. Let's open up its uh, PPG here. And let's go to the color and let's adjust the color a bit. I'll take the blue blue channel here. I'll increase it to about 0.4 and change. And I'll take the green channel increase that to about uh, 0.9 something like that get this nice uh, um, more of a yellowish color as opposed to an orange color and the intensity and all that stuff I'm gonna go ahead and and leave that stuff alone let's go ahead and render this out from say this angle over here like this so this is a pretty cool contrast of colors here we have sort of this cool light coming in from the ceiling and a warmer light trying to come into the window although we don't have uh, enough lighting coming in through here just yet we're gonna fix that in a moment okay now that I have the portal light set up for that window what I want to do is create a, a light that casts shadows now I have this sunlight coming in from the outside and it is casting some shadows here from the bars in the window but I don't like it at all so what I'm gonna do is open its PPG and I'm gonna turn off its light contribution the specular and the diffuse this way the sunlight controls the sky shader However, it doesn't uh, show up in our scene, which is what I want, because I want to create my artificial uh, sun lighting myself using my direct lights. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a spotlight with a volume effect so that I can go ahead and place it in front of this window. Since I already have a spotlight that has my area light, my shadow parameters tuned and all that stuff, I'm just going to take the one that I have here already and I'm going to duplicate it and use this one again. And you notice that it's still aiming toward uh, an interest point up there. And the interest point is actually down here in this well somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the interest point and I'm going to do that pretty, pretty easily. I'm going to hit 8 to open up an explorer view and then I'll hit F to uh, frame in on this, on this uh, light. And you can see that the new light I created, it's called Ceiling Volume Light 1. Let me go ahead and let's change that name. Let's change it to Arc Window Volume Light. Okay. You'll also notice that it's below the hierarchy of this spot root. That's not what I want. So I'm going to select in the Explorer to Arc Window Volume Light. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this Cut button down here. And... Once I do that, it's going to cut it out of that hierarchy. So now the arc window volume light is no longer uh, parented to the spot root over here, which is exactly what I want. So now if you notice, if I move this light around, well, it's still going to go ahead and, and aim at that, uh, at that interest point down there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the interest point since I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to delete it, get rid of it just like that. And now you notice that the light no longer... Uh, aims at any interest point because we uh, deleted it okay so next thing I'll do is I'll go to transform and I'll go to reset rotation here just to reset all of uh, its rotations and I'm just gonna get this light position roughly 
where I want it, which is going to be in front of this window, a little bit back away like this. And I'm going to need to uh, rotate it into position as well. So let's go ahead and use the rotate tool here to uh, rotate this guy the other way. So I'm going to rotate him so that it's about negative 180 degrees, so it's facing uh, toward the actual dungeon itself. And I'm also going to go ahead and rotate this in the X. Maybe about negative 30 degrees will be pretty good. Okay, that's not bad. And I can hit B, B for boy on the keyboard, to open up the, uh, the manipulator here. And I'm going to have to make some changes. Let me open up the PPG here. I want to increase the amount of this cone angle here from 60 to, let's try 75 degrees. And that actually looks like it's going to work out pretty good. You can see with the uh, spotlight manipulator where that cone angle actually reaches, which is an, an awesome little feature. I think it's very undervalued and very underrated, the, the light manipulator tool. I don't see a lot of people using it, and it's just so useful. Okay, so that's pretty good. And we can see that the, the pink ring here that represents the light fall off is uh, at a pretty good distance, so not too bad. Now let's go ahead and open up this light and we can see that it already has light fall off. It already has the area parameter turned on. So there's very little changes we need to make here. So let's go ahead and just make a little bit of a change here. I'm going to take this uh, yellow color. I'm going to drop the, the blue channel down to about 4, uh, 0.4, close to 0.5. It's pretty good. And I'll leave the rest alone just to give it a little bit more of a yellowish uh, hue to it. I'll leave it at an intensity of 3000 and, and uh, see what we get. So let's go inside the dungeon here and let's create a render and see what we have. And I didn't get anything because uh, my camera's actually outside the wall there. So let me just come in a little bit closer here and, and uh, re-render. Okay, so there we go. We can actually see the nice volume effect from the light on the outside coming in through here. And we can see that nice soft arc shape of that, uh, that extra lighting coming in through the through the arc window volume light, which actually looks pretty good. So let's rotate the camera and, and uh, do a render from this angle so we can get a good look at what the volume effect is looking like. Now the volume effect is obviously way too strong. So this thing looks too bright. kind of looks like uh, there was a nuclear blast outside this dungeon. So what we need to do is drop the, uh, the reflectance parameter of the volume effect for that light. So with the arc window volume light selected, let's click on the selection button here in MCP and open up the property page for the volumic property. And let's drop the reflectance down by half to 25. And let's render again. Okay, that's not too bad. However, the volume effect is still a bit strong, so I'm going to drop it. The key here is to go for something that's more subtle. So I'll drop it to about a value of 10 and see what that gives us. And as you can see, it's a constant process of tweaking parameters, render, uh, rendering previews, tweaking again, rendering previews, tweaking, rendering, tweaking, rendering, back and forth, back and forth. So this is where actually you could lose a lot of uh, production time during this process. Unfortunately, it's something that you, you just can't avoid because you have to make sure that everything is rendering out right. So I like this effect a little bit better. We can see more detail in the window back there. Plus, the volume effect is pretty subtle, yet it's strong enough to the point where we can see it in our scene, which is great. So let me close that. I'm going to leave uh, that spotlight alone for the moment, and I'm going to just assume that it's okay, at least for now, and I'm going to move along here. Now if I come over here to this window, and I render this out, you can start to see that the the lighting inside uh, past those bars in the window is so dark that, well, it's literally pitch black in there. You can't see anything. Now, this could be a neat effect if that's kind of the, the look and the lighting that you're going for. In this, in this case, though, we're going to go ahead and put some lights there. We're not going to skip that. I'm going to go ahead and light up that back hallway over there to give it, uh, give it a pretty good feel, make it seem as if though it's a hallway that actually leads to some, to, uh, some other place. Okay, so we can see how the hallway is. The hallway has no lights in it, but we're about to fix that right now. Um, I'll do that in the next video, however. I'm going to end this one here. We've been uh, going over this for a good while now. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start to set up the lighting for that hallway in the back over there and create ourselves a nice little ambient mood.